Good morning. I'm Carl Lose, and it's good to see all of you here. Where is everybody? We're kicking off stewardship this morning, but no one's in church. We're going to need some big time help to pull this off. You called again? You again? I'm not sure we want your help this year. And after the year we've had, I'm surprised you're willing to show your face around here. Hey, what do you mean by that? Oh, please. You sent the pandemic, and people suffered. People are still suffering. And then to add to our misery, you sent fires, lots of fires, and more people suffered. I didn't send the pandemic. And I didn't send the fires. Those are earthly problems, and they've been brought on by earthly mistakes. Yeah, but you didn't do much to help either. Whatever happened to that omnipotence thing? Uh, you know, it takes time to fix earthly mistakes, and frankly, I've been a little bit busy. Uh, let's not change the subject. There's more to discuss here. Because of you, we are all socially distanced and wearing masks. And we can barely talk to each other except over the internet using something called Zoom. That's not much fun. And forget about the great programs like Strawberry Festival and Lobster on the Lun, which were so fun to work together on. Are you done? No way. We can't pray together. We can't share the Eucharist. We, uh, we can't uh, share the peace with our neighbors. We can't gather in the parish hall after Sunday for fellowship. And we can't even visit the sick and the needy. I can go on. Oh, by all means. Well, the level of intolerance is, well, intolerable. People are talking, but no one seems to be listening. Did you know this was an election year? It's, uh, the country is divided, communities are divided, churches are divided. It's almost impossible to have a civil dialogue. There, I think I've said enough. I couldn't agree with you more, but I realize that you don't sound like a very happy camper. Well, given the current situation, do you blame me? It's true. There's been a lot of pain and suffering in the world. It's all regrettable. But the response to these bad things has been almost miraculous. First responders have selflessly put their lives on the line to help others through the pandemic. In the midst of fires and during hurricanes, neighbors have reached out to neighbors. And the medical profession, they have worked diligently and tirelessly to improve treatment for all those infected by COVID. Yes, yeah, all true, but... Uh, let me con continue. You know, you're so busy complaining that you haven't even seen the good that's been happening at St. Barnabas. What are you talking about? Well, how many Sunday worships were canceled because of COVID? I'll tell you, none. And pretty incredible for a church that had never streamed a live video before. Hmm. More importantly, you organize the ministers of encouragement. They are checking in with parishioners on a regular basis and sending cards. And let's not forget about the pastoral care ministry who are reaching out to those in need. Did you know that they are now back to delivering altar flowers from, uh, for those who need them? and hoping for maybe even a live back porch conversation? Yes, those ministers are a gift during this uncertain time. And speaking of gifts, how about the faithful parishioners who continue to give towards their pledge in these uncertain economic times? On top of that, more than a few parishioners have given additional gifts to St. Barnabas to offset our losses. Losses that have come from fundraising events that haven't taken place or not being able to rent our facilities. Isn't that what sacrificial giving is all about? 
Yes, we are blessed with a wonderful congregation. So finally, to cap off the good fortune, St. Barnabas got a loan from the Federal Government Cares Act. This loan, which could be forgiven, was approved in the early days of the pandemic, so you wouldn't have to lay off any of your staff. And since we're talking about staff, aren't you fortunate to have such a talented, creative, dedicated group of people working for St. Barnabas, including a new deacon? You're right about that. It's great to have live music and hear choir voices during the online service. And we're thankful for the dedicated work of the altar and flower guilds for preparing the church. In addition, the work being done by the virtual Sunday school is both creative and fun. And how about those volunteers that make our video presentation possible and those that work in the office to produce the banner and get the St. B.E. news out every week. There you go, you're on a roll. Right, so let's give a shout out to the outreach committee and their thoughtful work on creation care and social justice. In fact, the outreach team must be congratulated for their leadership in organizing the community-wide study of Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail. And through Reverend Will, St. Barnabas has become a leader in the conversation about social justice in our community. Oh, and let's not forget about the important work of the property committee. We may not be attending church on campus, but the property still must be maintained and ready for our eventual safe return to the sanctuary. Which reminds me, Heaven, when are we going to return to normal and return to our beautiful sanctuary? Ah, oh, normal. What does that even mean? The definition of normal keeps changing. If I recall, normal at one time meant riding to St. Barnabas in a horse and buggy sitting in an unheated sanctuary and listening to a two-hour sermon. Is that what you want to go back to? Oh, please, you know what I meant. I want to go back to the way we were before the pandemic. What? And abandon all the good work that's been done at St. Barnabas over the past eight months? But. No buts. You know what? You were given some lemons, a lot of lemons. And as the saying goes, you made lemonade. Huh? What are you talking about? Look, you've created new opportunities to have services as well as meetings outdoors to enjoy your beautiful campus. Did you forget that there's already been so many outdoor memorial services? And what about the outdoor worship service that we had last month with music? You've invested in new video and streaming technology to bring services directly into parishioners' homes. Think what that means for all those who are homebound or traveling or away like seasonal residents, like the snowbirds who wanna be able to stay connected to St. Barnabas. In addition, ministries and are doing more and more with regular Zoom meetings. And you've upgraded the weekly email the blast, which many look to as their primary source for news and events. Yes, you're right. Those are good things to keep, and we should do more of them. That's right. So stop focusing on going backward and focus on going forward. Hmm. I'm beginning to think about a plan. Great. It's about time. <laughs> Let me hear your plan. Thank you. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this short conversation between heaven and earth that we've brought to you once again. In many ways, it reflects the ups and downs that we've all been experiencing over the past eight months. At the same time, we've been reminded of the many blessings that we have in our community and here at St. Barnabas. But we want to nurture and grow those blessings, and we can't do that without your help. This is a stewardship season like no other. Here in Falmouth, across the diocese, 
and around the world. How can we build community, celebrate our faith, and give thanks to God when public worship is so limited? The answer is we are learning, and we want to keep at it until we can all come together to worship and to do God's work through St. Barnabas. So as we hear on many Sundays, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please join us in pledging your financial support to St. Barnabas.